Hello and uh, welcome to the second part of this um, mortar strike tutorial. Uh, hopefully you follow along with the first part of the tutorial just fine and hopefully you've ended up with something that looks uh, relatively like this. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about alpha blending in this portion of the tutorial. But before we get there, I'm going to come in and uh, just do some manipulation around the outside edge of this um, mortar hole. Because at the moment it's looking a little bit generic it's looking a little bit manufactured so I want to make it look a little bit more natural just by moving some of these verts around just by raising some height uh, I'm doing this manually uh, just because uh, I think you get more control over it like I said in the first uh, part of the tutorial and once you get used to moving these verts around um, you can start creating some really detailed terrain uh, just by using some imagination and some uh, some techniques so for this particular one I'm just uh, Continuing on just to come around and uh, just manipulate these verts around just to take away that squared edge that we had before. And I think, yeah, when we're getting there, I think I'm just about happy with this manipulation now. And when we are happy, um, we're going to get ready to do some alpha blending. So deselect once you're happy, and then I'm just going to come in and reselect all these patches. Uh, I'm just going to cap that base texture quickly before we copy it. Switch down to uh, a grid 8 again just to help move things around as it makes it easier. Press the space bar to copy all those and lay them back over. And as you can see, they're kind of shimmering there. And as we've been doing manipulation, we've gone off grid somewhere. We need to snap these back to grid. So I'm just going to uh, a shift left click around all of these patches and select all of them, both layers. Make sure we get all of them. We need to snap these back to grid. So I'm just going to switch down to uh, a grid 1. And I'm going to press Control G to snap these to grid. And the reason I went down to grid one is because I want these to snap to grid, but I don't want them to um, destroy any of any of our uh, work here. If you try doing it in grid eight, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> so we're going to do some alpha blending now. I'm just going to come in and select one of our uh, one of our uh, patches here to do some alpha blending. I'm just going to select that mortar texture there. I'm just going to use the surface inspector to shift this around a little bit, just to uh, center it up in our uh, our mortar hole we could just stretch it out a little bit if we wanted to I'm just going to do this kind of quick just for the sake of time and obviously you take your time doing it press B on your keyboard to bring up the verts and you shift left click to select uh, the outside um, vert rows on this press G to bring up your uh, alpha tool here and when you do you're going to want to slide this amplitude bar all the way down to zero and select alpha and when you do it's already done it for me there but you just want to uh, shift left click on the outside um, vert rows here and just uh, click apply and just blend that texture away there so this is starting to take shape now let's um, do some alpha blending on our circular uh, patches here I'm just going to make sure I've only got one one of our patches selected I'm going to shift, shift back down into a grid 8 just so when I've got these patches selected I don't accidentally move them around when I'm in grid 1 there <laughs> I'm going to select uh, this texture here. It's like a scorched earth type texture. I'm going to do the same principle um, on the outside uh, vert rows on these ones. Press G to bring up your tool and just click apply on the outside uh, vert rows here. Do the same for your inside uh, when we get in there. Again, I'm just doing this quickly. You can obviously take your time and make this look as good as you can make it. But for the sake of time, I'm really just trying to do this quickly. So that's uh, some alpha blending done there. The stage three of our alpha blending, we want to uh, do some alpha blending on our outside patches here. And I'm just right clicking in the 3D window with my um, my pointer over the patch I want to select. And I'm just selecting it from the drop down menu. That makes it easier just to make sure we select the patch we want. Uh, so the next step, I'm going to texture those patches with another blend texture. And I want to bring up my uh, advanced patch editing tools by pressing Y on my keyboard. And I'm going to select flatten and alpha. And I'm just going to come in here and use alt left click to alpha blend around the edge of this mortar hole. I'm going to be quite careful not to go towards the edges here because when we add more terrain in, it just make things uh, easier to line our textures up if it's uh, if it's an unblended texture on the edge of these uh, terrain patches. Once you're happy with that, just deselect and have a look around. Uh, at this point, uh, we might think about doing some um, some tweaking just to. Uh, uh, make it look as good as we can get it so you can come in here I might alpha blend along this uh, vert row here I'm just going to use my amplitude bar slide it up slightly mm, just about there maybe again you take your time make it look as good as possible 
Uh, but even with just some quick some quick blending, it looks pretty pretty good, even if I do say so myself. <laughs> so with that done, and when we're happy, if we wanted to uh, put this somewhere else in our map, just select all the patches and uh, press spacebar to copy, move it around where you want it, add more terrain in around it. Uh, as you as you can see, adding more terrain in around this wouldn't be a problem. So it's nice to have one of these set up in your map if you know you're going to have them and then you can just copy it and make your life a little bit easier. So that's just about it really. You can come in and make some extra tweaks, make it look really good. I'm not too happy with that bit there. Let's see what we can do. Maybe add a bit more texture there. Okay, I'm just going on now. <laughs> no, no when to quit. So I'm going to stop that now. Uh, we're going to move on a little bit and talk about um, possible areas that might occur with this and uh, um, how we can go about preventing those. So with um, once we're happy with our blending, I'm going to come in and select all of our blend uh, patches here and only our blend patches. And what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to uh, make them non-colliding. So once I've got all my blend patches selected, make sure you get all of them. I'm going to right click in my 2D window. And I'm going to go to non-colliding. And the reason I'm going to do this is uh, two reasons mainly. If uh, we wanted to filter these uh, terrain patches out, we can. So I'm just going to press F on my keyboard to bring up my filter options, and I'm going to I'm going to um, toggle uh, non-colliding on and off. And if we can use that now, if we wanted to get to uh, the patches underneath these blends, just for quick texture changes. But I'm going to show you what I'm going to use this for mainly. I'm going to filter out. Uh, non-colliding and uh, I'm going to press shift L to enter our light grid and I'm just going to select all these patches press S to bring up your surface inspector if it's natural here you can see that's pretty screwed up um, and if it was like that when we try to compile uh, we're going to get issues so just use the L map setting on your uh, surface inspector save press shift L again to return to our uh, normal texture view filter uh, non-colliding back in and then at the same time filter structural out I'm doing these um, separately it just makes our life a little bit easier so shift L again to learn the light grid and we're going to um, make sure our uh, light grid texture is all lined up on our blend uh, layer don't use natural use light map so with that done I'm just going to exit here bring back uh, structural I'm just going to save it quickly and I'll put my money where my mouth is and I'll do a quick uh, test compile here of the BSP just to check for errors. That's my map file, compile level. I uh, got away with that there. <laughs> so we've got no errors, our geometry is fine, nothing's wrong with that. So I've gone ahead and compiled this now so we can have a look in game. I think to be honest I could probably have done a little bit of work with the texturing, I could go back in and do it, but I think just quickly there you can see that's uh, quite a nice bit of detail um, for a mortar strike there, let's have a closer look at it. Um, obviously when you're making yours you can make it slightly deeper if you want, um, that's kind of up to you, I think that's just about a good size for a mortar strike hole for, for this particular um, map I was making here that I made this for. As you can see there, it's a really nice piece of detail. Uh, when, you, when you practice with it, it becomes a lot easier. So hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully you, uh, you can create some nice detail mortar strikes for your map now. <laughs> and that's it from me. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thanks.